right cisco nexus uh, 1000v now this chapter is very important and the following chapters are just you know click and go click and go following three chapters so this chapter is very important foundation um, that is going to build all the pieces that we had in the previous chapters in the previous chapters of nexus 1000v what we saw is not really Nexus 1000V. We saw VMware and what it is, uh, what it has already, uh, without having Nexus 1000. And when we have Nexus 1000, what we have an added uh, feature to the existing features. In the existing feature in V switch, we already have VLANs. We already have a rate limit for the traffic that was sent out. Now, when uh, we had VDS, Virtual Distributed Switch, we, we had one more f feature, uh, adding rate limit for the incoming traffic. And the same old VLAN features also there. And, uh, and then now, uh, some security feature also we saw on uh, VSwitch. What is that? The first one is like, um, I remember the second one. The second one is like, we cannot change the MAC address uh, on the virtual machines. MAC address changing, it won't allow, which means it's secure. Let's quickly see that one and then come back here. Uh, and then the frogging one, if the traffic is coming from some other domain, it won't accept the traffic yeah these are the three uh, security uh, features that we already have before 1000v one is promiscuous mode promiscuous mode means um, a traffic that is intended for a particular destination only that destination can see the traffic no other uh, vms can see the traffic Example, if uh, VM1 sends traffic to VM3, only VM3 alone can see the traffic. VM2 cannot see the traffic. That's the security. Then the third one, second one we already saw, the MAC address change locked down. MAC address cannot be changed. The third one is frog to transmit blocking. Meaning if the traffic is coming from some other node, it, it prevents sending those frames which appears to come from other node so these security features are there, already there now Cisco Nexus 1000V we are going to see which is going to come and uh, f fill all the gaps in Nexus in Nexus what's the problem we do not have visibility to the VM levels Though we had two different version of switches in Nexus, like V switch, which is default, and then VDS, which came later, still the problem is not solved. The visibility problem. The physical network is totally isolated from the virtual network. There is there is no bridging between these two. So Nexus One Thousand V comes as a bridge between the physical and the virtual network access layer now it is not only just coming as a bridge it also provide a lot of solution it it makes us it, it makes us to feel that vm machines are uh, like a physical machine the treatment that is given to the physical machines when we have one to one one server connected to one physical port same treatment we can also give now to virtual machines now these are the uh, additional features that we get uh, when we have 1000 V previously we do not have security by providing ACL now we can write ACL for VMs port security Access control redirect, net flow collections, both receive and transmit. 
quality of service layer 2 quality of service layer 3 quality of service differentiated service code point as well as COS and then span analyzing a data flow over a particular VM port this is really wonderful we take traffic that is coming from this virtual port and analyze what is going on in this particular port we can we can take a mirror copy of the traffic that is coming and going inside this V port virtual NIC and we can analyze somewhere here outside that is that is supported now after 1000 V and then mobility of network policy and security to a virtual network so that is also there we already see this one from the beginning it was also there before 1000 V in a distributed switch we call it as V motion when we move the V when we move VMware from one V port when we move the VM from one V port to another V port another V NIC all that changes is only the the virtual port number but the VM property never changes the policies that it was undergoing here it will be same wherever it is moved it may be moved to different location of the same switch or it can be moved to another hardware in which ESXi uh, in which the cluster has been done So maintaining the policy as the VMware VM migrates using vMotion. So it, these are the features now we have all together when we have 1000 V. right now we already have distributed virtual switch now on top of distributed virtual switch we bring VM VM has got a two module supervisor module and Ethernet module now each ESX will have one virtual Ethernet module one virtual Ethernet module and this Ethernet module are controlled and managed by a supervisor module here now because it is drawn outside it's not really a separate box if you want to keep it as a separate box we can but it can be one of the VM machine here 1000 V we can have more than one VSM for redundancy so the control and management plane can be a part of VM also it can be in a separate server so virtual supervisor module and VEM virtual Ethernet module this with the help of VSM we we create policies and we give the port, port policies with the help of port profile we create uh, policies and we give it to uh, we give it to VEM to manage so all we do on uh, Cisco iOS previously in VDS uh, we had port profiles we had port groups but those port groups were created by the VMware team 
who has very less experience about VLANs, less experience about quality of service, rate limit, private VLAN. So it was a hard time for them to um, create poor groups. Now what we have is we have taken back our position, meaning we do everything on a CLI. Right. We do everything on a CLI and then we push those um, port groups that we create with the help of port profile uh, to the VMware level. All the VMware engineers need to do is, all that they need to do is just pick one VM and map a port group by using graphical user interface the drop down menu in the drop down menu all the port groups we created the port profile that we created here in 1000v in supervisor engine will be available for them to use so if you if you would have used vmware already you might have seen how to add a network adapter to the v vm so where, same way you go and add the network adapter when you try adding the network adapter in the drop down menu you will see all the support groups we bind one of the support group to the VM machine so policy based VM, VM uh, virtual machine connectivity we have and that is also mobile that, that can be moved from uh, the policy can be moved along with the VM as it moves from one physical box to other physical box. If this VM is moving to other physical box somewhere here, now according to us, it is moving from one physical server to another physical server. But according to the VM it is not really moving from one physical server to another physical server because according to VM all these physical boxes are seen as one pool of hardware so even V motion is very very easy all that we need to do is right click this VM machine that we want to move to this server right click this VM machine uh, in vCenter we have something called vCenter in where we will see all these machines in one place so if you want to move this VM to this location to this location all we need to do is right click this VM and we say migrate when we say migrate it will show you option it will show you these three servers server 1, server 2, server 3 we click on server 2 and it will it will take uh, you know a few seconds you will also see some confirmation like completed now once it says completed then it is already migrated and running in this box you won't lose many packet the server will be up and running serving we, you know one or two packet may miss it depends on the, uh, the the memory and processor speed of this machine there is no other big loss so very less downtime very very less downtime this is again supported with policy so or all the policy that we were having here the same policies are being carried out to the other server without losing any policy as we do v motion next is non disruptive operational mode what does it mean non disruptive operational mode this means that there are two modules like vsm and vem vsm and vems 
Now, even if VSM goes down, the data traffic will be still keep going. The data traffic will be still keep on going without any disturb disturbance. Though the control plane and management plane is missing, but because policy everything is already enforced based on the policies, traffic will be still flowing. So it's not disruptive operational. So to be on safer side, we used to have two VSM so that if one VSM goes down, the other comes up and there won't be any control and management problem if if there is a need for control and management problem this VMs won't get struck so according to VM according to the um, Nexus 1000 each ESXi is considered as a data plane each ESXi. So here we got three ESXi. So these, there is server two and server three. They are data planes. And the control plane is Nexus OS, which is VSM. Now this VSM can run on a VM. Then we call it a CPVA control plane virtual application control plane virtual application VSM is nothing but a control plane if the VSM is running in one of VM then we call it as CPVA if it is running on one of the physical appliance then we call it as CPPA physical appliance control plane physical appliance if the control plane is one of the upstream switch as we already saw in the beginning this this control plane and management plane can be a physical box 1100 Nexus 1100 if that physical box is going to control if this is VSM and these are all VEMs VEMs each VEM is a data plane controlled by this upstream switch then we call it as uh, CPP control plane physical apl application Cisco Nexus 1000V virtual operation. VSM is a software appliance. It can be on a physical server or it can be on a virtual machine. Um, this VSM. We already saw these two points. Now, two VM virtual machines can run in redundant for the high availability. High availability. So to provide high availability, we can have multiple VSMs. They are the control plane. They can uh, they can run so that they can support failover. Now VSM is a supervisor module, as we already know. The other VEMs are considered as the line cards, like this. This is one physical box having three VEth means three VMs. There's another physical box, another physical box. So each physical box has got one VEM. Now when VSM goes down, when VSM fails, 
it will not disturb the data path traffic will continue to forward by vems so the, this vsm is not going to be um, a problem if it goes down for the data path that's what we saw in the previous slide here non disruptive operational mode each vm is assigned a virtual port on a vem or each vm is provided a virtual port on a vem that so this vm act as a line card for the vsm so we have three line cards here totally this one this one and this one three line cards in each line card we have three v eths ethernet ports three ethernet ports now we got a centralized control now through vsm we can see every vms and if i want to have a policy on this particular vith i can have it i can i can create a port profile and i can bind the port profile to this physical sorry to this virtual interface that is what we see here when we say show interface vith1 which is this interface i can see the mac address of the machine virtual machine i can see the name given to the vm i can see on which module it is running it's running on third module 1 and 2 will be for the supervisor for the kernel and so on and this is 1000v host now distribute virtual switch port number is 1 yeah this is the first port and the profile that is binded to this is this is the name of the profile user defined name this is the one which is configured on 1000v and binded to this vith by the vm admin and this port is in access mode because it is connected to one vm it belong to one vlan so it will be access mode but the upstream port will be in trunk this 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 port will be in trunk because this ve1 is connected down to vm it is access those things we define in this profile all right so here what we see is we have a uh, two different type of traffic one storage traffic originating from vms there's a there's a there's a virtual disk i scsi or v scsi and the storage traffic is originating from here and ethernet traffic is also originating from here storage we know it uses fiber optic fiber channel fc this is ethernet so both ethernet as well as fiber channel traffic originates from these vms as the ethernet comes down it it talks to 1000v and then it gets into hypervisor the storage traffic that is originating that goes directly to the hypervisor now hypervisor sends them to different vm nic one is vm nic card another one is vm hpa card host bus adapter hpa card now now this traffic has to be 
sent to different uh, type of uh, device ethernet traffic can be sent just like that to lan no problem but when uh, this when the storage traffic comes out it cannot be sent just like that to san storage area network storage area network knows only fiber channel so it's a fc that comes here, comes out and here it is ethernet it sent as ethernet now what how how the traffic will be sent here is it will be sent like this fcoe and later when it reaches the storage dest sand destination there it will be d encapsulated meaning oe will be removed and fc will be sent like this this is the adapter Menlon is the name of a lab they have a they have named it you maybe they might have designed this particular card there now the traffic that is intended for ethernet is coming the traffic that is intended for fc is coming the storage is coming out so this this adapter what it does here it sends as the ethernet and this way it sends as the fc oe fiber channel over ethernet the san world now it carries as fc oe this may be uh, 5500 or 7000 which can do FCOE forwards it and then on the other end it will be decapsulated it will be actually FCOE traffics will be sent to um, something called LEAP L-E-P LEP logical endpoint where de encapsulation happens what leap will do is logical endpoint will do is it will stripe the FCOE type Ethernet frame it will stripe out the FCOE and only FC channel frames will be forwarded to SAN so that happens here in this end here it comes as FCOE and this 5000 series or 7000 series switch what it does it types out FCOE and sends it as FC to the SAN world now what is the what does the job here that is what known as leap on this 5000 we call it as logical endpoint Now this gives an overall view of uh, Nexus 1000V architecture. Here we see here we see VMware and the VMware mission itself which initiates VMware and then we have a lot of VMs n number of vms and we got a control plane vsm and that control plane is here just Right, it, it's coming as a separate uh, module and then VNIX and then VMNIX so the control plane what it does is just comes and gives how the traffic need to be forwarded the policies all the stuff to the VNIX and then uh, the traffic starts flowing 
if if this module goes down this yellow module goes down still there won't be any disturbance for achieving the module module that we saw in the previous slide the traffic need to be in different VLANs. There are four different types of traffics we see here. One traffic coming from V center. When we have VDS, so V center became very important. V center controls all the boxes, all the clustered servers, physical servers from one place. So you can see this red line going from V center, going everywhere. Next is the control traffic. Control traffic are the one which is going between VSM and VEM. This yellow line you can see it goes to VEM. It goes up to that VM, each mission. Each server, physical server has got one VEM. Actually, we got one VEM here. Like this, we got VEM here. So, between VM, VSM and VEM, the traffic that is going, we call it as control traffic. The controlling uh, parameters like port, port profile and so on. Next is the packet. This is also a kind of control, but this is not the control that is between VSM and VEM. This is the control that is coming from our external world like CDP. CDP can see only a VSM. It cannot see VEMs. So, if someone says CDP neighbor detail, they need to see all this VEM related information how it is possible now VSM will go and talk to VEMs and collect gather the information and give it to the external CDP neighbor so those traffic that CDP traffics they they are packet type port groups management port group control port group packet port groups next is data Data is nothing but the traffic that is going between one VM to another VM. Now all this need to be in different, different VLAN. They cannot be in same VLAN. For that we need port group and we create port group. Now that is what I explained here. I want, to, I want you to just take a, time, take a minute, go through this. And if you have any problem in understanding, please let me know. All right, okay. So same thing that what I explained it is there. I'll also quickly explain you. So uh, to have VSM out of band management without disturbing any traffic flow, we need this management with vCenter. It works. Control traffic is between VEM and VSM. Uh, which sends all the control messages that is that needs to be exchanged between this VSM and VEM packet. Same between VSM and VEM, all those CDP related traffics and then data, all the traffic that is running between VMs, virtual machines. So as I already said, uh, VSM is the one which is going to be identified by any CDP box. If I have a physical CDP, a physical box running CDP, I may have a VEM with a lot of VEMs. I don't see, I will not see all VEMs here. I'll see only one box having this many line cards. How it is possible? Because the CDP can talk only to VSM. It cannot talk to VEMs. It is the VSM that talks to VEMs. 
So it will be seen as one box. Though it may be running on a multiple physical servers, they are in one cluster controlled by one VSM. What if I have written VSMs? Not both will be active, only one will be active. So there will be sing there it will be seen as single switch. What makes it to see single switch? The XML that is running with SNMP which helps to identify the device shows that we virtual network as one virtual machine. So when we type show CDP neighbor we will see only one virtual machine not multiple. The data plane which is VEM which is a line card to VSM. So each data plane behaves uh, like an independent switch. Now each data plane, you you see we, we have line cards. Can line cards talk each other without VSM? No way. Same story here also. Line cards, they don't learn any MAC address. Nothing. Same like that. No address learning or no synchronizing across data plane. No concept of fabric between data plane. They, they don't talk each other like this without the help of control plane. No concept of forwarding packet uh, from an ingress line to egress line card. So there is no communication like this. No ether channel across, no ether channel across data planes. So, if we need, then only we control plane comes into picture. With the help of control plane, we can do anything across the data plane. Right. So it's same like a physical port representation, you know, when I type show interface brief, as we see the physical ethernet, the VLAN that it belong, type it belong to, same like that we can also see this VNIC, V ethernets here. Instead of ethernets, we can see as V ethernet. Okay, no, no, sorry, this talks about the uplink ports. This talks about the uplink that is connecting um, to Nexus 1000. If Nexus 1000 is a physical box, then how the uplink will look like? This is how the uplink will look like. When we type show interface brief, we can see that the uplinks, port number 1 and port number 2 in module 3, they are connected to the physical NIC cards and they will be in a trunk mode. The reason is they need to carry multiple VLAN traffic because they are uplink. They are connected to the NIC cards. So same like you know physical physical switch show commands here also we have show interface instead of Ethernet 10 all we need to type is V Ethernet. We can see the interface the wrapper not the MAC address on it and the name of the VMware machine and on which host it is in. It is the first host ESXi 1. So this gives a, a same information what we used to see on a physical interface. Whether it is administratively up or not, 
operationally down or up active on which ESXi host and so on all right this is the actual secret behind uh, the VM communication what 1000V is doing is we actually bind all the policies to VETH port group we bind it to VETH means you know not sorry not VETH we bind it to the VMs that is connecting we bind it to them so you see here between VETH and uh, the VM there is another port which we are not really focusing which is called LVETH so LVETH only will keep changing this number will keep changing this never get changed as we move the VM only LVETH will change so VETH and LVETH they communicate they bind to each other and whatever that needs to be sent to this VM sent to VETH and VETH sent to LVETH and LVETH sent to VM and vice versa Now Cisco Nexus 1000V installation and operation. See the installation needs installation and the configuration need to be done by two groups, one by the VMware administrator and a few portion by the network administrator. Both works together here. That's why we see this color blue and hello. So all VM related um, things will be done by the VM administrator and all the VSM and VM related stuff will be done by the network administrator. All the certificates that needs to be generated, the XML file needs to be added will be done by us as the network admin for VSM and VEM. So this this slides you will understand better uh, when we see the installation process of VSM and VEM, which we will which I I'll, I'll be helping you to do after this class so this also talks about the same thing VEM configuration VSM configuration and then assigning port groups deployment of Cisco Nexus 1000V First, you know, we can we we create VSM on uh, the V center, for which you know we need to have three basic uh, port groups. As we already saw, one to control the data, other one to con have the control for the control messages, the control VLAN, data VLAN, and then one more we saw three VLANs need to be there okay this is the one control VLANs packet VLANs and data VLAN these three VLANs are mandate for us to have the 1000V installation so once it is there uh, we can have VEMs on ESXi Now Nexus 1000V depends on DBS, Distributed Virtual Switch. 
with the it, it it becomes a part of virtual this this nexus v becomes a part of distributed virtual switch when we when we install vsm and then we create port profile uh, with the help of vsm we create port profile and then we send to the v center and in v center the vm administrator assigns the port group to each vms sorry each vms virtual machines so enforce enforces the policy that we create on vsm vsm is a cli cisco nexus we create a port profile here and the vm network administrator uses it in vcenter assigns it to the vms this is how the port profile will look like what vlan whether they are isolate or community vlan or isolate vlan that is private vlan property what are the port numbers allowed and what should be the speed priority spanning remote span so these are the things that will be mentioned generally and report profile which we do in cli and give it as a port group so any any vms need to be added in web application will be added to this port group all that you need to do is all the v, all that vm where administrator need to do is map this port group to the ports virtual ports these are all port groups there are four port groups i can have 10 pc in this 10 vms in this port group 20 v, vms in this port group any any number that doesn't matter right so with the help of port groups with the help of policies what we can do is we can have all this it is the port profile that helps to create port group so sometime i interchangeably use port profile port group so with the help of port profile we can have all this for our traffics we already discussed this in the first slide vlan private vlan acl port security acl redirect cisco trust point netflow rate limit cos and dscp port mirroring which is remote switch port analyzer because it is in uh, vmware it may be i think extended remote switch port analyzer now as the machine moves from one physical server to another physical server like this like this the port profile because it is binded to the vm it will be carried so there won't be any loss in policy and maybe there may be one or two packet loss because it is moving from one physical server to the other physical server not more packet loss also maybe one or two depends on the processor speed so that brings us to the end of this chapter so for the remaining chapter what i'm going to do is i'm going to send you this uh, powerpoint presentation in a pdf form and uh, i would like you to go through i'll also send you three video links i want you to go through those three video links which shows the configuration installation of vms and vsms um that is what the next following two chapter three chapter is about uh, i want you to go through those three videos and uh, also our presentation and if there will be any doubt in understanding please get back to me i'll fix it 
so when you are done with the three videos and if you don't have any doubt we are done with 1000 V next we are getting into 5000 and 7000 um, in a rapid speed mode